and we are back again with another technique tutorial. Like I told you last week, at the Drum Tech Academy, we got a lot of different teachers with different techniques. So in this YouTube channel, I don't just want to focus on my own technique, the ankle technique. I also want to feature the techniques that our teachers at the Academy are using. And today we're gonna dissect the double bass technique of Mr. James Stewart, drummer of Vader and Decapitated. Enjoy. Okay, so I've prepared three different clips for all of you. The first one deals with the topic of slow double bass. To demonstrate the kick technique effectively, I'm gonna to have to start with the hand technique with a basic, a basic molar stroke, as in just a full stroke or a, a down stroke. See this kind of whipping motion and my kicks at slow tempos are doing exactly the same thing. I bring the foot up, and I kind of just use a whip, a similar type of whipping motion with the, with the feet. And that helps, that helps me bring the beater back uh -huh. uh, so it doesn't rest on the head like so. Because a lot of drummers have a tendency to leave the beaters on the head. And with triggers or with electric kick drums like these, it doesn't really matter that much. But on an acoustic kick drum, you're going to choke your sound. And that's not something you want to do unless it's totally intentional mm -hmm. um, so this will give you a kind of a warmer open sound and it'll sound really good on on microphones and so the so when we're doing really slow tempos it's just the same in each foot and so when I'm doing doing kind of Blasty stuff at, at slightly higher tempos. Still basically the same motion. So I really like this explanation and comparison between his hand technique and his foot technique, the molar technique with hands and with feet. One other thing that I would like to add right here is James's pedal settings. Reason is he has got really extreme pedal settings. Almost 90 degree beta angle, number one, and number two, he's using the extra heavy Tama springs. So actually his pedals are really difficult to play. They kind of remind me of the pedal settings from Dave Lombardo. When James was at the Academy office here in Vienna, I tried his pedals and I can tell you that at slow tempos and at really high tempos, these pedal settings are really beneficial. You know, you get lots of power and lots of speed as well, but it's really hard to control these pedals at mid-tempos because it constantly feels like you are working against the spring. So right now we're gonna check out the second clip of James Stewart and now he talks about the topic of mid-tempo double bass. Going up to this sort of 160 to 180 problem tempo that seems, mm -hmm, to, yeah. be, <laughs> seems to be annoying everyone. Uh, is, you know, The ankles are coming into play a little bit more. It is not exactly the molar motion, but it's, it's somewhere in between. It's an in-between tempo, so it's an in-between motion, yeah. basically. And then as we get faster into sort of my total comfort zone, the thrash zone, the ankle starts taking over much more, and then we get to the higher tempos. Yeah, and that'll be the swivel starts coming into to effect a bit more, but that's that's more of a timekeeping device. All right, what you could see in this clip is that at tempos around 160 BPM, change switches to a mix of upper leg, so hip flexor, and lower leg, calf muscle, calf, calf. <laughs> For all of you, <laughs> if you are interested in the calf T-shirt, hashtag calf. Just check the link in the description below. So for mid tempos and these kind of extreme pedal settings, it's really difficult to just use your calves. So he's using a mix of upper leg and lower leg. All right, so let's see this one again. Here you can see a mix of upper leg and lower leg moving up and down, lots of power here. When James increases the tempo a bit more, up to 180 or 190 BPM, you can see that he switches from involving his upper leg. So he's not using his hip flexor anymore. He's just using his calf muscle and he also starts to swivel a bit. So let's see that one. Yeah. 
And now let's check out the third clip that we have prepared for today, where James showing his swivel technique for faster tempos. Uh, it just helps me a little bit, but it's mostly ankle. I'm still doing a downward ankle motion. Mm -hmm. And the swivel just, I don't know, it helps me stay loose a little bit and it helps me uh, know where I am in the beat. Swivel technique, uh, I don't think I do it traditionally or, <laughs> or any, I've never really sat down and worked on, on a swivel as a means to get speed. Uh -huh. um, I've been talking with Martin a lot today about how speed isn't really my aim. It is kind of, but it's not something I work towards specifically. Uh -huh. And uh, the swivel kind of, I was in the studio trying to lay down a Vader track called Eye of the Abyss and it was my first, first Vader record. It's got straight double kicks at, at 220 and I more or less butchered it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was going for it with the ankles. And it wasn't quite in time. Mm -hmm. We managed, you know, we managed to make something out of it in the end. It took a lot of takes, but we got there. And I came back home from the studio feeling pretty bummed out. I was like, well, I have to play this live now. And then I started working on Swivel because it helped me feel where I was in, in the beat. So when I was playing with the click, even if I couldn't hear the kick drums, I know that moving this way is the one. One, two, one, two. One, two. Yeah. All right, so I know now if I'm playing seven beats or eight. So it's a means of keeping my timing in check. And uh, that, was, that was really all it was for. It's still, still the same ankle motion. I'm still using the ankles mostly. For the full lesson, just sign up at drumtechniqueacademy.net. You can find the full lesson in our membership zone in the bonus section. I would like to finish this video with the last topic that James covered in this short clip. He mentioned that he uses the swivel technique as kind of timekeeping device. So this motion helps him to play tight and in time. One thing that I've seen here at the academy is that basically when it comes to fast double bass and with fast double bass I'm talking about 230, 240 plus up to 280, 290 or whatever. Um, basically all these drummers have one of the following two approaches. Number one, the motion approach and number two, the acoustic approach. These two approaches help them stay in time at higher tempos. Let's start out with the motion approach. James is one of those drummers who uses this one. So to play steady in time at higher tempos, James is focusing on the motion to keep in time. So like he mentioned it, he's swiveling to the outside every time on the beat. So if he's playing 16 notes with his feet, he starts out with swiveling out with the right foot on the one. On the E, he's swiveling out with the left foot. On the AND, he's swiveling in with the right foot again. And on the R, he's swiveling in with the left foot. And then, on the second beat, he's swiveling out again with his right foot. So actually, the quarter note pulse is always this outwards motion with his right foot. This enables him to play tight double bass at high tempos. So basically, he's focusing on the motion. And for him, the most important part of this sequence is right foot swiveling to the out on the beat. Another drummer that uses this motion approach that doesn't get mentioned really that often, but he was like extremely good back in the days a couple of years ago, is actually is Jade Simonetto, former drummer of Hate Eternal, who's playing like he was able to play 270 and 280 tight 16th notes um, on Pearl Eliminator pedals. So go check him out on YouTube. And if you check his foot technique, you will see that he's not using a swiveling motion, but he's using a kind of some sort of pumping motion. So he's also accenting every time on the beat with his right and his left foot to keep in time. So the second approach that I would like to mention here is the acoustic approach. That's the one that I'm using as well. Basically, those drummers who are using that approach use two different bass drum sounds for their in-ears. So I personally, I also recorded a video about that topic, which you can find on this YouTube channel called, I think, tight double bass at 270 beats per minute. I'm using two different bass drum kick sounds for my in-ears. So with my leading foot, in my case, it's my right foot, I'm always using a louder sound that's kind of more dominant. So it's easy to hear the subdivision and play tight. Another approach that I've seen when it comes to the acoustic approach 
is the stuff that Simon Schilling, drummer of Marduk, the Bloodhammer, is using. And he's doing the following. In his in-ear, basically, all he hears is his right kick. So his left kick is muted in his in-ear and he's only listening to his right kick. And this one has to be on point. The left foot is just following. Right foot is leading, always on point. He hears that one in his in-ear. The left foot is just following along and he's not even hearing his left kick in his in-ear. So both approaches, the motion approach and the acoustic approach work out fine. So just choose what works best for you. And it's important to mention that this kind of stuff is only important at higher tempos. So if you're playing at 200 or 220, you don't really need to think much about this kind of approaches. But if you want to play really fast and if you want to play tight at high tempos, these two approaches can make a huge difference. Alrighty, and that's it for today's tutorial video. If you want me to cover a certain topic in next week's video, just comment below. For the full session with James Stewart, just sign up at drumtechniqueacademy.net. Link is always in the description below. You can find the full lesson in, our bon in the bonus section of our membership zone. And that's it for today. Have a great day. Cheers from Vienna. Bye-bye.